Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here, and today we are looking at the reaction of Alpharius' twin brother Omegon when Alpharius was slain by Rogal Dawn, Primarch of the Imperial Fists. And we covered that encounter in my previous upload, so be sure to go check that one out first if you haven't yet, as that is definitely one of the top moments of the heresy thus far. But as usual, spoiler warning to begin with as we are covering events from the Horus Heresy novel Praetorian of Dawn and if you have not read this for yourself I strongly recommend you go do so first as that's how you get the truly get the most enjoyment out of it and also we help to support the amazing Black Library who without them we would not have all this fantastic lore and the stories to discuss and enjoy because that's what we're all here for the love of the lore but with that said, let's just jump straight in. Omegon woke. He had never slept, had never dreamed, or felt the tug of mortal fatigue in all the days of his existence. Yet here he was, waking from black oblivion, the cold deck of the ship beneath him, the darkness of his arming chamber close about him. The pulse of the beta engines was a distant rumble on the edge of silence, coldness poured through his flesh, moisture beaded his skin, he could taste blood in his mouth, thick and harsh with iron, his hands were numb, the fingers hooked as though grasping something that had vanished, he moved the fingers and then brought them up to his face, sharp needles of pain prickled beneath his touch, and then a new feeling came, crushing in its weight undeniable in its truth, even though he could not tell how it had arrived. He was alone. Now, this is obviously referring to the figurative sense of him being alone, we're not just talking about him being alone in the room right now. It means he is alone now. Like twins in the, in the real universe are supposed to have that sense of about each other. Here it's the same thing. Omegon feels something is very different. He feels alone, like within himself. He feels alone. Words began to form on his tongue, but the door to the chamber was already opening. Arcos stood in the light of the door, his battle plate humming as he stepped within. Lord Omegon, Arcos said, bowing his head briefly, then stopping as his eyes fell on the Primarch. Is there something wrong? No. No. Is there? He blinked. Cold spirals of light wormed briefly at the edge of sight, alone. Is there word from Lord Alpharius? Omegon asked, still looking at his hands. He could sense Arcos's frown without needing to see it. None, he said. But there is something else. Omegon looked up, the muscles of his neck cold as they moved. Warmaster Horus wishes to consult directly with Lord Alpharius. Do we have any indication of what his concern is? No, Lord, said Arcos. Our sources within the Warmaster's court have become unreliable. Obviously, we have more of Omegon struggling to come to terms with his sensation that he's feeling here, but I absolutely love that last line there. Our sources within the Warmaster's court have become unreliable. The Alpha Legion don't care who you are. They are going to have spies infiltrated within your forces, even if you're allies. It doesn't matter who they are. They're going to have infiltrated everyone out there. They're going to have news and information leaking to them, no matter who the opponent is. Omegon nodded, glancing over his shoulder as though he had heard something in the empty dark. Prepare the Metatron, he said. I will speak with my brother. Arcos nodded, his gaze lingering on his Primarch for an instant before he left. Alone. Armagon armoured himself, the blind servitors bolting the plates of his armour over his flesh as the numbness in his hands and neck became a smouldering pain. I am alone. The knowledge rose through the coldness of his thoughts, certain and inescapable, though he could not say how he knew that it was the fact, not fear. He had never been alone, not truly. 
even from the first spark of a thought in his consciousness, he had known that he was one of many, a fragment of a greater whole, a piece of a great destiny. Now that's an interesting point too, because before he was one of many, one of 20 Primarchs, or 21 with the twins, he was a part of a greater whole, a, a piece of great destiny as it says. Then with the heresy, they lost that. And with the path the Alpha Legion chose in their secret loyalty of sorts, with an ultimate victory against chaos that they're going for, it, it really became just Alpharius and Omegon together. And now Alpharius is gone, he really, really is alone. And now he walked from his armory, the scaled and crested helm of the Primarch of the Alpha Legion under his arm. Arcos was waiting in the sealed chamber where they kept the Metatron. Omegon nodded, and the attendants began to unbolt the mask from the one-time Astropath's head. He watched as the famine, famine thin figure arrived, ghost light and smoke pouring from its mouth to form a shadow in the air above it, a shadow with a face and form. Frost spread across the floor and up his armour. He bowed his head even as the shadow turned to look at him. What had happened? What was happening? What was he now? And he realised that the words he was about to say would trap him for the rest of existence. The jest turned into mocking truth. I am Alpharius, he said. What is your will, my war master? And there we have it. Alpharius is dead. Long live Alpharius. Now, of course, we're all free to believe what we want in the law. You can choose to interpret it however you like. That's the great thing about being a fan of the law. You can, you can interpret it however you want. If you want to believe that that wasn't Alpharius when he was dueling Dawn, then you can believe that. No, there's no one to tell you any differently. However, if we want to go with the official line, then yes, Alpharius is dead. Confirmed by the author of this novel, that was Alpharius. And here we have Omegon ceasing to be himself and permanently assuming the role of his brother. So as far as the rest of the galaxy is concerned, Alpharius lives. It was actually quite a, a sad passage reading through that. The sense of loss Omegon is feeling. He's lost all of his brothers. None of the loyal ones will accept him. And he doesn't want to be with the traitor ones, so despite allying himself with them as part of their own route to victory that the Alpha Legion's going for, he doesn't really class them as allies, so yeah, he hasn't got any brothers really anymore. I really hope we get a story set in the scouring where Dawn comes face to face with the new Alpharius. I would love to see his reaction to that. Or when Gilliman turns up one day saying, yeah, I've, I just killed Alpharius. <laughs> What's Dawn going to say about that? Of course, unless we get a retcon of that in the future. It'll be interesting to see what happens going forward as well. Will this loss drive Omegon closer to being a standard traitor to the Imperium? A bit more to fall to chaos? Will the resentment build within him and the Legion, of course? Interesting times ahead for the Alpha Legion. Really interesting times ahead. But what do you guys think of Omegon's reaction? Do you think it's good he's taken up the Alpharius mantle? Or do you think he should have revealed himself as Omegon, twin of Alpharius to the wider galaxy? Why, why should he be Alpharius? You've got to believe the Emperor sensed the death of one of his sons. You know, yeah, despite him being busy on the Golden Throne. You've got to think that something like that will definitely, he'll definitely sense this, the loss of one, another one of his sons. I wonder what his thoughts on the matter were. Drop a comment down below with your thoughts. But still, Alpharius may be dead, but long live Alpharius. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to help this channel grow. I truly appreciate all of the support I receive. It really means a lot. I really enjoy talking the lore and just everything Warhammer with you all. I mean, I don't know what happened this week, but the channel got a nice jump of about a thousand subs. It was mad. I opened my emails and it was flooded with new subscriber notifications. You know, yes, the channel is still small in the grand scheme of things, but it was really great to see and 
I really appreciate all the subscriptions, old and new, from all of you. It's really nice. The, the community we're getting here is really, it's really enjoyable. And if you enjoyed this particular video, then consider dropping a like on it too. I really appreciate that. But that's all for today. So with that said, I'm off and I'll see you guys again real soon.